Man, what I'm about to share with you today is so refreshing. It speaks to many of the same points that I've been making about the NFL in regards to the league and black head coaches. This was brought to my attention by one of you guys last night. Anytime. Anytime you guys come across something that pertains to what we cover here on the channel, send it my way, btlkc84 at gmail.com or kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. No idea is a bad idea. Now, obviously, I don't use all the topics that get sent to me, but a decent amount of the topics that we cover here on the channel come from you guys. The dude who sent this to me last night, he made a comment about there might not be enough on this to make a full video about it or Something to that effect. I don't remember exactly what he said. You would be surprised at how often I can pull 10 to 15 minutes off of a 30-second clip of propaganda. So anything you come across that pertains to the channel, no matter how small you may think it is, send it my way. Let me look at it. All right. Let's get into this. After the Rams won the Super Bowl, certain mainstream media outlets tried to turn Raheem Morris into a victim. It was the same tired, baseless victimization that we have disproven on the channel countless times. Raheem Morris led the Rams' defense to a Super Bowl. Sean McVay could not win a Super Bowl until he hired a black man. Raheem Morris wasn't given head coaching opportunities because he's black. I can understand how for some coaches, it is easy to fall for the bullshit. It is easy to allow yourself to be victimized by the mainstream media. The media, they can be convincing with their propaganda. Victimizing yourself is much easier than the alternative, which is, I failed. I wasn't good enough. Raheem Morris, Raheem Morris refuses to be a victim. He refuses to follow the path of Brian Flores. When Brian Flores filed his lawsuit against the NFL last month, I said it would be detrimental to black coaches across the league. For one, you are not going to strong arm the NFL into complying with your demands. And not just the NFL, that goes for any business. All this lawsuit did was piss the league off and it made it harder for black men to become head coaches. Brian Flores contributed to an environment where NFL teams could view hiring a black coach as a liability instead of an asset. Or hell, even interviewing one could be a liability. If I interview him and don't give him the job, will he accuse me of being a racist? If I fire him after a losing season, will he sue me and say the only reason I fired him is because of his skin color? Businesses are risk averse when it comes to liability. What's the best way to eliminate liability? You don't make yourself vulnerable to it in the first place. I want you to listen to what Raheem Morris had to say about NFL owners and black head coaches. This clip is courtesy of the Pivot Podcast, which features Channing Crowder, Ryan Clark, and Fred Taylor, all former NFL players. Check it out for yourself. Here's what the issue is with the black coaches or with anybody else. Like, people don't feel comfortable around us. People don't feel comfortable around us. Hmm. You heard him mention how he felt comfortable about the Glazers, the family that owns the Buccaneers. He expounded on his relationship with the Glazers. We'll get to that in just a second. But what did Raheem Morris mean? They don't feel comfortable around us. What did he mean? It's not hard to figure it out. It's the same point I just made. The mainstream media, with the assistance of Colin Kaepernick and race baiters like Jamel Hill and Stephen A. Smith, have created a toxic atmosphere around the NFL. They have created a narrative that the NFL intentionally holds back African Americans while also exploiting them. First, the league was biased against black quarterbacks. Once that narrative didn't stick, they moved to the league is biased against black head coaches. I'll give you an example. Of, of how I think the process goes on behind the scenes when NFL teams are looking at head coaches. And this is not precise. It's just an example. Let's look at my Saints. Mickey Loomis had two serious candidates to replace Sean Payton, Dennis Allen, Brian Flores. On paper, they're pretty much equal. Brian Flores has a better record as a head coach, but Dennis Allen has familiarity with the Saints as an organization. He has relationships with the players, the staff, ownership, the city of New Orleans. 
With all things being equal, what could have been the deciding factor? If you're Mickey Loomis or if you're an NFL owner, would you risk hiring Brian Flores? You see what he just did to the Giants when they passed him over. You see what he did to the Broncos. You saw what he did to the Dolphins. What NFL owner or general manager in their right mind would assume that kind of risk of hiring Brian Flores? And this doesn't just apply to Brian Flores either. This applies to all black coaches. This lawsuit raised the barriers of entry. It makes it more difficult for a guy like Raheem Morris to get an opportunity. Let's get to his tenure in Tampa and his relationship with the Glazers. There is this false notion perpetrated by the media that when black head coaches are actually given an opportunity, it's not a real opportunity. It's not the same type of chance that white coaches are given. Black coaches are always given shitty teams. They're tasked with turning around the franchise, and they have a losing season, they get fired. It's not fair, damn it. First of all, teams looking to hire a head coach, in most cases, they all have one thing in common. They suck. The Bengals, for example. The Bengals, they're not looking for a head coach right now. The Titans, the Packers, they're not looking for a head coach. You know who was? The Jags, the Texans, the Giants, the teams at the bottom of the standings. The media has tried to victimize Raheem Morris by saying he wasn't given a fair shot in Tampa or Atlanta. He turned the Bucks around. He went 10-6. and six. Then they fired his ass. Listen to what Raheem Morris said about his time in Tampa. The Glazers, okay. extremely comfortable around. Around you? Easily. Tim? Joel, yeah. Ed, Brian. Do you feel like the chance you were given in Tampa was a fair chance. I do. Now, here's what it was. I, I can't tell you that it wasn't a fair chance. Here it was, it was a chance, right? Now, whether the chance was what it is for other people, I can't, I can't, I can't imagine that. Explain that, though. All right, so here's the, here's the opportunity we had, right? It was like, we want to start over young, we want to build from the bottom, we're going to draft, build through the draft, yada, 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 right? We went 10 and 6. My second year. Mm -hmm. First year was awful. We went 10 to 6. That's a fair chance, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The next year was the lockout. Okay. We started off the year 4 and 2. Okay. We were leading the division. We went to Chicago. We went to play in London and lost to the New England Patriots and couldn't win a game after that. Right. And then I got fired. Mm -hmm. right. I'm not going to say it's not a fair chance. I'm not going to be that guy. Like, I should have got fired. We lost 10 games in a row. Right. Like, I got fired. I'm not, I'm not going to be that guy. But the racial thing. You know what I'm saying? RC, that's what I want to get to, the racial thing. That's what it is, where you had a head coaching job as a black man. Exactly. Brian Flores just did the lawsuit. No doubt. Hugh Jackson came out. He was talking about that. Do you think that that is a problem? How can and the I Rooney say rule, Bro, I, I, I just said 100. For me, for the me. The Rooney Rule, Rod, right, the Rooney just, Rule is bullshit. Oh, no, no, I'm not talking about the rule. The rule, I'm is, just saying. The rule is something that's put in place to help people out. I can't say I was a, a benefactor of the Rooney Rule, right? Yeah. I was 32. I was, I was so young and got a head job, right? Yeah. That was given to me by the Glazers. There you go. I mean, the guy said it himself. I lost 10 games in a row. I should have been fired. I mean, am I the only one that thinks that makes sense? If you miss 10 days of work in a row, is your boss going to give you a promotion or are you getting fired? If you don't perform in this league, you get fired. It's that simple. I don't give a fuck what color you are. Black, white, red, yellow, brown. It doesn't matter. If you're an NFL head coach and you consistently lose, you won't be an NFL head coach for long. You saw in the clip, Channing Crowder, he was trying to bait Raheem Morris. He was trying to get him to take the racial cheese. He was trying to pivot the conversation to race. Credit to Raheem Morris for not biting into the bullshit pie. That woke pie is addicted. Once you bite into it, it's hard to return to being a normal person. Just ask Stephen A. Smith, who used to be a somewhat logical thinker. Took one hit of the wokeness, he immediately became colorblind. Instead of becoming addicted to woke, instead of buying into this bullshit, Raheem Morris points the finger at himself. He actually credits the Glazers for giving him an opportunity at 32 years old to become a head coach. Now let's get to the interview process. One of the main points of contention in the Brian Flores lawsuit, 
black coaches are not given fair consideration in interviews. Now, this is another false narrative painted by the mainstream media by people who have never been interviewed by an NFL team. Let's hear what Mar uh, let's hear what Raheem Morris has to say about his experience being interviewed by NFL teams. My interviews, I haven't had many. You know, so like, I got the job at Tampa. Yeah. Before that, I interviewed at Denver. That was my first interview. Interview I, for what? I'm, I'm, I was a head job. At the head the, job interview. Yeah, when, when, when Josh McDaniels got it. Okay. And Pat Bowen was in that interview. And some of the same people that's in that room now was in that interview, Joe Ellis and some of those guys. So I, I can't knock those people for that interview. Like, I thought it was great. Like, I, it was my first one, don't get me wrong. So I, I don't know officially going into it, but like, I thought it was a legit interview. Right, but it's time. No, no, you no, no. You just won the Super Bowl. Let me tell you something. Hey, friend, no, wait, wait. I'm and not going to argue with you about whether it's time or not. I agree with that 100%. I'm just talking about my experiences, right? I, I get it. I'm so, like, it. then I went right. to Jacksonville last year. Right. And I interviewed with Atlanta last year. Mm -hmm. And the people in Atlanta, you know how I feel about those people. Right. Arthur Blank, mm -hmm. come on, man. Like, I knew this man before I was even coaching for him. Yeah, had like, an opportunity I, I, to enter him there. Yeah, too. like, right. I, 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 I've been to his ranch. I've been to Mountain Sky. I've been to his house. Like, mm -hmm. like Arthur Blank gave me a legit interview, like, with, this, with, with, with him. So I can't complain about what he did for me. Right. What more can I say? There you have it. They tried on this podcast. They tried and tried and tried to bait Raheem Morris into a racial conversation. You saw the difference in that clip. Between a guy like Raheem Morris, who refuses to be victimized by his skin color, and three dudes who only see things through the prism of race, who only see black and white. I hope NFL owners see this interview and realize Raheem Morris would not be a liability. This dude deserves to be a head coach, not only because he's qualified, but because of his mentality. Raheem Morris doesn't see race. Portions of this interview, it should be played on woke take, should be played on undisputedly woke. But you'll never see these clips of Raheem Morris on ESPN. Why? Because it doesn't fit their narrative. Raheem Morris actually sinks their narrative. Here we have a dude who is involved behind the scenes in the NFL telling you without explicitly telling you that everything the media says about the league is bullshit propaganda. You heard it yourself. Raheem Morris feels that he has been given a fair chance by the league. You look at the landscape of the NFL in 2008, 2009, when Raheem Morris was hired in Tampa, there were not very many 32-year-old coaches. Younger head coaches are more common today, but back then, most NFL head coaches were older. Yet somehow, the league has a bias against Raheem Morris and African-American head coaches. All right, let's wrap this up. Once again, keep the video ideas coming. Shoot me an email anytime you see topics relevant to the channel. I would have never known about this Raheem Morris interview had it not been sent to me. Also, let me know what you guys think. Raheem Morris refusing to be baited and sinking the false narrative the media paints about the NFL. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.